Welcome children. So in today's class, we are going to have the review of the previous class. So the chapter is polynomial. So let us discuss what is polynomial. Let us take some examples. 2x square plus 3xy plus uh, y square plus 6. So here you see the power of x is 2, power of x is 1, y is 1 y square plus 6. So here all the powers are natural numbers. So that is why if all the powers of the variable are natural numbers, it will be called polynomial. Now next one you see x to the power 4 y cube minus 2 x to the power minus 3 y square plus 8. This one is positive number, this one is positive power, this one is negative power, this one is natural number. Because of the presence of the power minus 3 over x, that is why this is not called a polynomial. Next, in the last class, you have discussed polynomials based on terms. So, one is called monomial containing one term, that is single term, 2x, 3x, y square root 5 a b c x so they are all one one single term that is what they are called monomials the second one binomial containing two terms so here 4x plus 3 then 5 by 2 x y minus root 7 so this is two term this is two term so this will be called binomial trinomial so three terms try three so twice y square minus 3x, y square plus 7. So there are three terms and this is called trinomial. Then again, polynomials based on the degree. So degree, as I have told you in the last class, that degree means the highest power of the variable. So now here the degree is 1, so the highest power of the variable, which means there is x, there is y. So in 2x plus 6, the power is 1, and 2y minus 7, the power is 1. So that is why here the highest power of the variable is 1, it is called linear. So next, what do take? Polynomial. The degree is 2. So 5x squared plus 7x minus 3. Here the power of x is 2, the power of x is 1. This is constant. So at the highest power is 2, that is why this is called quadratic. Next one is cubic polynomial where the degree is 3. So 5x cubed minus 7x squared plus 8. So the variable of x, here it is 3, here it is 2. So since the highest power is 3, that is why this is called cubic. So these are the things you have learned in the last class. So in today's class, you are going to study about two things. That is, one is the zero of the polynomial, and the next is the uh, remainder theorem. Now, so zero of a polynomial, zero. Let us take one example. Before I explain this term 0, take one equation. Say twice x plus 6 equals to 0. Let us solve it. Solve. So 2x equals to minus 6. So here you get x equals to minus 6 divided by 2. So on cancelling, you get minus 3. Now, in class 8 and 7 also and 6, you have done solutions, that is the solving the equations. So, the moment you solve, then, then you tell this as the solution for the root. So now, so required solution or required root R double T, so you say minus 3. From now on, you will be 
you will be telling the same thing. These two things will be the linked by a special term that is z. So now you will say that by solving this, if you have got x equals to minus three, that means your zero is minus three. Just as you tell, like solution is minus three, root is minus three. So now you can say zero is minus three. One more you take. Say you take twice x minus root seven is equal to z. Solve it. 2x equals to root 7. So here x equals to minus so root 7 divided by 2. So here, so you say like the required solution or the required root. It is also now you can say as the 0 is required 0 is required 0 is root 7 by 2. That means by solving the equations, whatever the value of the variables you get, that will be called the g. So normally you have said the solution or the root, and this now you will call it as the zero of the polynomial. I will take a few sums from your book, exercise two two point two. So textbook exercise 2.2 so you will take your textbook the moment you see this one 2.2 i will be doing question number four one and two was done in the first class so question number four then i will come back to question number three find the zero of the polynomial so find the zero of the polynomial Let me take one. So, so these are the two more equations given from textbook exercise two point two. So find the zero. So that means to find the zero, you you will have to find the value of x, which means you are going to solve for x. Here is the other variable is x, you are going to solve for x. So, solution, cd process. You will assume that p of x equals to 0 when, when you are being asked to find the 0. Let p of x equals to 0. How much is p of x? It is given x plus 5. So you write x plus 5 equals to 0. So this gives x equals to minus 5. So now here, what is the 0? The 0 is minus 5. So require 0, it is minus 5, which you have called is as the solution or the root. Now, the one more term they have used, so that is also called the 0. Let's take the second one. Let p of x equals to 0. How much is p of x? It is given x minus 5. So x minus 5 equals to 0. So this gives x equals to 5. So the required 0, required 0, how much you got? You got as 5. So after solving the equation, Whatever the values of the variable x, y, z, etc., that will be called the zero, which you have called in class eight or seven by solving. You have said as the root or the solution. So now in the higher classes, that is like nine, ten. So we will call that as the zero. This is a singular term. Zero means the plural. So there will be you will be getting like quadratic form. Now they are the linear form to the power is 1. So the 0 will be only a single one. But it is quadratic, it will be two zeros. If it is cubic, you will get three zeros like this. So that way you will try the remaining equations from the book. They are very simple. 
I'll be doing one more from the same equation, that is the number for say six. So here, P of x, it is given ax. Now here, it is given that a is not equal to zero. That is, a is not equal to zero means if a is zero, then there will be no polynomial because it is zero. Zero into x will be zero. So that is why you can say this is non zero. That is, the value of a is not zero. Now, you are to find the zero. That means you are to solve for x. Let p of x equals to zero. So the p of x is given a of x equals to zero. So here, solve for x. So x equals to zero by a. So it equals to zero. So the record zero is how much? Record zero, that is the value of x, record zero, it is zero. Zero. Then you will do where you are asked to find the zero of the polynomial. We are coming to the next one that is question four. That is question four. Exercise two point two. Verify where the following are the zeros of the polynomial indicated against them. So you want to just check, just as you solve, and then you verify. So here they have given the values of x and then you are going to put that value of x in that particular equation and then if the value is 0 then that particular value will be the 0 which means it is the solution of that polynomial. Now let us take number 1 p of x equals to 3x plus 1 so minus 1 by 3 Here, they have given the value x equals to minus 1 by 3. Now you have to check whether this is the solution of this particular polynomial or not. So how you are going to check it? You are going to put in place of x the value minus 1 by 3. If the result you get 0, then this is the 0 of the polynomial, which means in very simple language, this will be the term of this so now the solution p of x equals to 3x plus 1. How much is x? x is given minus 1 by 3. So in place of x you have put minus 1 by 3. So the place of x will be now replaced by minus 1 by 3 plus 1. So Cancelling 3 and 3, you will get minus 1 plus 1, you go to the result 0. That means, as the result is 0, by putting the value of x in the polynomial, so that means this is the 0 of the polynomial p of x. So therefore, minus 1 by 3 is 0 of p of x. Say you have got other than 0, you have got like 2, minus 2, anything other than 0, then that, that, that value will not be the 0 of the polynomial. You should get 0 only. Let us take number 2. P of x equals to 5x minus 5 where x equals to 4 by 5. Now, one thing keep in mind, children, this 5 will be were not going to put 22 by 7. They have given 5, so you keep it as 5. Do not make it 22 by 7. So now, you are going to show whether the value that is given 4 by 5 will satisfy this polynomial or not. It will satisfy when by putting this value in place of x and you get 0, then this will be the 0. But if you did not get 0, then this will not be the 0 of this polynomial. So let us see. So here p 
So in place of x, it is 4 by 5. So 5 into so, now x is replaced by 4 by 5. So 4 by 5 minus 5. So 5, 5 cancel, you got 4 minus 5. Now you cannot solve it and you cannot write 22 by 7. That means the result is not equal to 0. So if the result is not equal to 0, therefore 4 by 5 is not the 0 of P of X. Therefore, therefore 4 by 5 is not the 0 of P of X. Now, so this is very simple children. I have done from the book and you will get in detail if you go to my PDF file. Okay, so you see in the detail there I have given everything. Let us today learn one more new term that is the remainder theorem. To make this remainder theorem clear to you, I will take one example. Let us take say x squared plus 6x minus 7 divided by say x minus 1. This is the long division process. So this long division process is not the remainder theorem. I will be coming back after doing this. So, the first is x squared. x into how much you will get x squared? So, x. So, x into x minus 1. So, x into x minus 1. So, you get x squared minus x. So, here x squared minus x. Now, you will be doing minus. So, the rule you have learned from class 8. Children. So, here is minus. It will be now plus. There is plus, it is now minus. So this one is the plus, this this will be the minus, this for opposite side gets it. Here it is one. So plus six x plus one x divided by seven x minus seven. Now so there is seven x. So plus into plus plus. Then seven into x seven. So you take seven. So with 7, so 7 into x minus 1, so x minus 1. So 7x, seven, 7 into 1, 7, so minus 7, minus 7. So you go 7x minus 7, so there will be plus sign, there is plus, it will be minus sign. So all this got cancelled and you got how much? Zero. Now, children, keep in mind, by using the long division process, you have got the remainder 0. So just keep in mind. So remainder r of x equals to 0. I took this r because indicating remainder. So here the variable is given x. So I took x. So the remainder of this polynomial is 0. Now we will use this remainder here. How do you do? Solution. Now comes remainder. So you see the process. It's very simple. You name the polynomial by notation. So say let P of x. I took x because the polynomial is given x. So it's x squared plus 6x minus 7. Now you are going to divide by x minus 1, which means this is the divisor. So in this case, you are to make the division equals to 0. Okay, children, what I told that this is the dividend. So you have named the dividend by a notation say P of x. This is the division. So just keep the point that you are to make the division equals to 0. So x minus 1 equals to 0, x equals to 1. Now, in place of x, you are going to put 
So remainder equals to so P P polynomial. How much is X? X is one. How did you get this concept? This concept you have got from the remainder theorem. So the definition I have given in the file, you just go through it. I have given. Now, now in place of x, now in place of x, so here equals to, so in place of x, you have put 1. So all this x will be replaced by 1. So 1 squared plus 6 into 1 minus 7. So you've got 1 plus 6 minus 7. So 6 plus 1 is 7 minus 7 over 0. Exactly, children. In that long division process, when we did remainder, you got 0. So by using the remainder theorem also, you have got 0. That means you will not get a different value. Though you have used remainder theorem, the, the values will be the same in both the cases. Okay, children. So it is very simple. So this is the process of the remainder theorem. Definition I have given in the PDF file, you just go through it and it is also given in the book. Now, one more. Let us take.
plus 3 into the power is even. So the sign will be plus because minus into minus it will be plus. So 1 square is 1 plus into minus minus 3 then plus 1. So you got minus 1 plus 3 minus 3 plus 1. So plus 3 minus 3 plus 1 minus 1. How much we have got? 0. So that means using the remainder theorem you have got the remainder as 0. But practically you do and see if you do by the long division process you will get remainder 0 only. So the same thing when you divide this polynomial p of x by x minus 2 what will be the remainder? So second one. So this is the same thing. I am just changing the second one. So from here it gets changed. So now number two. So this is the divisor. So as I told you that you will have to make the divisor equal to zero. So that x minus half equals to zero, which means x equals to half. Now this x will be replaced by half. As you replace x by half, all this x will be half. So 1 by 2 whole cube 3 to 1 by 2 whole square plus 3 to half plus 1. So remainder equals to equals to so it will be p of half. How will you get this remainder using the remainder theorem? Remainder theorem. Theorem. So now this x it will be 1 by 2 whole cube plus 3 into 1 by 2 whole square plus 3 into half plus 1. Let us simplify. 1 cube it will be 1, 2 cube it will be 8 plus 3 into 1 square it will be 1, 2 square it will be 4 plus 3 by 2 plus 1. Now you got 1 by 8 plus 3 by 4. So 3 into 1, 3 by 4 plus 3 by 2 plus 1. Now, children, you see what is the LCM? There is 8, there is 4, there is 2. So, 8 is divisible by 4 and by 2. So, the LCM will be 8. So, you know it, 8. Now, you want to divide this LCM by the denominators. So, 8, 1 is 8. So, it will be 1 plus 4, 2 is 8. So, 2 into 3 is 6. Then, 2, 4. 4 into 3, 12 plus 8. So now 20, 26. So it will be 27 by 8. That means your remainder you will have got 27 by 8. Which means that if you divide by the long division process also, then the remainder will be exactly 20, 27 by 8. There will be no more changes. So when they will they will ask you to find the remainder, then you are to use the remainder theorem only. But if they say that Divide by long division process. That time you are going to do by the long division method as you have done in class 8. Okay, children. So today, due to the lack of time, so I cannot take means I cannot go beyond that. So in the next class, we shall meet. So I am just coming to an end of today's class. Thank you. Have a nice day.